Outlander Season 4 introduced a lot of big changes for Claire and Jamie, a home at Fraser's Ridge, a reunion with their daughter Brianna, and even a new villain in Stephen Bonnet, to name just a few. But there was another, more subtle shift happening on screen that might have escaped your notice, the characters' costumes. As Nina Ayres, the costume designer alongside Terry Dressbach, tells Glamour, Jamie, Claire, and their loved ones are literally in a new world. That means new cultural influences, new weather elements, even new fabrics that they wouldn't have known or used before. We're making sure we're telling the story as to where those clothes might have come from, she explains. Because they are really out in the wilderness, there's barely anywhere to get anything. Oh, and several of these outfits had to be designed while keeping in mind what a 20th century woman would think an 18th century outfit looks like. That's a lot of work and research, but Ayers and her team pulled it off. They even found time to sneak in a subtle callback or two. Here, she explains. Glamour, this season mostly takes place in colonial America. What was it like prepping for that? Nina Ayers, the most important thing this season has been to try and establish that new world, what it was about 18th century America that defined it and then finding those key pieces to introduce to our characters. We started on Wilmington, in North Carolina, and did a lot of research into what, exactly, those elements would be. Really, it's the mix of cultures. We looked into the cultural and traditional costumes of Europe, where, most of, the settlers would have come from. Then mixed it with the Native Americans who were obviously there, as well as previous settlers. Then, we thought about, the practicalities of the terrain. What sort of practical garments they would have worn. Glamour, for Claire, were there any specific challenges? And A, it's always hard because you want to make sure that nothing is just emerging from out of nowhere. So you start off with a question as to where her costumes would have come from. Then you've always got the fact that she's a 20th century woman, so practicality is her thing, as well as trying to blend in with everybody else. She doesn't want to stand out too much. And she's not a very frivolous dresser, so one of the elements we brought in were block-printed cottons from India, which were exported to the colonies at the time. We kept a silhouette that people understand as Claire's, something she's used to wearing, but we use linens more than wools, from Scotland. Linens were a big thing, and generally used in warmer climates. I think the most interesting thing was working out what she might have made herself when they get to Fraser's Ridge. She's more layered this season than we've ever seen her before. We used rabbit skins and things like that, that's what they're eating all of the time, so it's what she has access to. We made quite a few garments that are simple, as if she has made them herself. We used the most basic of techniques while, thinking about whether, it's a practical thing that would keep her warm, or it's waterproof or it's what she's actually doing in these things. Glamour, whereas with someone like Joe Casta, her costumes might reflect her wealth and status. And a, for Joe Casta, we made her wardrobe quite old-fashioned. She's a little bit of a relic from the past. And Claire doesn't particularly enjoy being with Joe Casta, or at River Run. Joe Casta is getting gowns made for Claire, so they're not, she's being forced to wear things she wouldn't generally choose herself but she's just playing the part. Glamour, there are moments in the book where Claire wearing pants is a topic of conversation. Was that a conversation to feature more on the show? And A, we ask ourselves the question of, where, do the pants, come from? From Joe Casta's point of view, it would have been so scandalous for a woman to have been in breeches at the time, while Claire was at River Run. But we could establish them later on, in a practical sense, they could have been borrowed from any of the men that are surrounding her, working on the land at Fraser's Ridge. But she's not going to be seen in public, because a woman would never have wanted to be seen in public in a pair of breeches at the time. Glamour, because Claire is a modern woman, how do undergarments come into play? She's used to having a bra, but she's back in a different time when those aren't available. Does that change the silhouette in any way? Would she make one for herself? And a, Last season, when she went back through the stones, we saw quite a lot of it. She made a corset that was out of a 50s bra, and she wore it. After she was shipwrecked and her clothing was disintegrating, 
she was wearing her shirt on her head, ripping socks up, making bandages and everything. But it had a zip in it, so it wouldn't have been anything she would have wanted anybody to see. The audience can see it in private moments, because they know her story, but you can't just have somebody look at things like that without making some kind of reference to the fact that it's a little bit odd. Claire makes concessions, like the bum roll, she still wears the corset and everything when she's at Jocasta's at River Run, but as soon as she gets a moment to herself, she strips the bum roll off. She won't wear any of those things when she's at Fraser's Ridge and she's just in the company of her close family and friends. Glamour, when she's at home, she can dress more herself. And nay, yeah, but I was reading an article about a man who had gone to visit a woman at the time, and he was absolutely appalled by the fact that she didn't have her corset on. She was at home and feeling poorly, and he had gone to visit her and was completely appalled. She was fully dressed but that really highlights the level of propriety women were expected to maintain. Claire pushes those boundaries, but without completely drawing too much attention to herself. Glamour, as for the garments she's making herself, how much skill does Claire have at sewing? And nay, well, she made the bat suit that she wore through the stones, but she has, simple sewing skills. And Marsley is a seamstress, so we've also pinpointed moments when she could have helped Claire or made her things. There are lots of trips to Wilmington, where they could have gotten different fabrics. We see them, one of their carts when they're leaving Wilmington, we loaded up some of the fabrics that she wears in the future, so we're making sure we're telling the story as to where those clothes might have come from. Because they are really out in the wilderness, there's barely anywhere to get anything. Glamour was there a favorite scene, or something that you looked forward to designing this season? And nay, it's hard because it's so diverse. There's beautiful scenes in both periods. Doing the Native American costumes has been really exciting, because it's been amazing having the time and the resources to actually honor that and do that beautifully and skillfully, to learn all of those techniques. I think they look fabulous. Glamour, while doing the research for this season. Was there anything that surprised you? And nay, I was quite surprised by the Native Americans' costumes, I had always thought of those costumes as quite a separate thing to Western clothing, but new settlers took on the Native American garb and vice versa. They all traded. That trade aspect was the most interesting thing to learn about. I think the most exciting thing is that this was a world that's not America as we know it today. It's pre-revolution, a melting pot. What actually creates this new world is the fact that everybody is quite different. It's the diversity that creates the unity, really. I had never really thought about that or how that all happened. Glamour, can you talk about Brianna's outfit when she goes through the stones? And nay, she attempts to fashion something that she believes is a period piece of clothing. She believes it's something she could get away with from the 1970s. So it's not something that she's made herself but there are some links to early 1970s fashion to the 18th century in a non-historian eye. You might think, oh, that could pass as a period dress. Glamour, she does stand out a little bit, though. And nay, yeah, she looks a little odd. But that's her interpretation of what people are going to be wearing. You're thinking, okay, I'm a 1970s American person without Google and the resources we have now, how would I think? We're purposely doing things that we know are completely wrong, because you know they would have thought it was wrong. When Claire and Jamie go to the theater, the costumes were an 18th century American view of 2nd century BC Iran. So we know roughly what they would actually wear in 2nd century BC, but how would an 18th century American perceive it? And then we have to use their fabrics and techniques and everything. Glamour, that must be a bit of a mind fuck. And nay. Yeah, but it allows you so much scope as well. You have real fun because you're going, oh my god, we can get this so badly wrong, it will be brilliant, you know? That's really lovely, to know that you're purposely getting things wrong. It's just from a different perspective, so it makes it not the same thing all of the time. It's constant challenges thinking of the different time periods and then thinking of the different time periods from other perspectives as to what is real and what people perceive as being real. Glamour, since the fans are so vocal, do you listen to their feedback at all? 
or do you want to operate independently? And a, I personally don't, but, costume designer, Terry Dressbach always has an online presence. If they have a particular thing they want us to follow, then they'll let us know, but I much prefer to create independently. No, I don't really listen to them. I think it might drive me slightly insane. I came from Game of Thrones, as well, I was the assistant costume designer on that for years, and that was so, we made that decision, to not follow the books too closely and create fantasy in its own world so you're sort of free to do that.